Dr. Ash is in here, and this is, we're still talking about multimodal perception. Um, we're now talking about behavior, and this is being used, the NUVA project for, on multimodal perception, the chapter that's listed um, in the comments for this video. So this is actually going to be our shortest lecture yet. Um, it has one slide. Um, and it's just that we're going to talk about the distinction between multimodal phenomenon and cross-modal phenomenon. So multimodal phenomenon is kind of what we've been talking about so far um, in terms about multisensory integration and in terms of the enhancement of that, multisensory enhancement, um, talking about the neural processes involved in that. That's when those information from two modalities is combined. Um, and it, two or more, so it doesn't have to be just two. Um, again, when we talked about the um, brain chapter, we talked about how they'll even have receptive fields that overlap in the same location so that we can really get this spatial information in this combined integrated way. So examples of that that we've talked about um, through the class um, that kind of um, really highlight this very well um, are things like the McGurk effect that we talked about in the speech chapter. Um, also the rubber hand phenomenon, which you're going to um, see a video of um, that's posted in the um, playlist um, for perception, but it's also posted on your Canvas website. Um, and then there's cross-modal phenomenon. Now this is different in that when we talk about cross-modal phenomenon, we're talking about information kind of crossing over um, from one modality into another modality and affecting that perception of that, that second modality. So multimodal is these two things are really being combined and integrated in really equitable ways. I mean, really ways that give us a better understanding of the whole of the object. Whereas cross-modal phenomenon um, is again, information from one modality is affecting how we perceive the other modality. So we talked about the ventriloquism effect in this class already. This idea that it looks like the sound is coming from that um, when it, it's really not even things such as like the movie theater, even though the sound is coming from around you um, and to some extent in front of you, it actually looks like it's coming from the actor's uh, mouths when they're speaking. Um, that's that ventriloquism effect. So this, um, our perception of vision, it kind of overrides some of our audio um, location, our auditory location abilities um, in that ventriloquism effect. So information from one is crossing over and changing our perception of information of the other. Another example of this is the double flash um, illusion, which again, we're going to um, have listed in the playlist um, and we'll also have um, posted on the Canvas site. So really, these are the distinctions between these. Um, the rest of the, the information about multimodal versus cross-modal phenomenon um, is really through examples um, that are listed again. That There's several examples for each um, that we'll kind of show you um, so that you can see how these things play out. So this is our last slide for our last lecture for the semester. Um, thanks so much, and we'll see you again. <laughs>